What's up coders and welcome to episode 3 of our calendar service playlist on the Google Apps Script course. In this video we're going to be talking about getting the data from the event. So there are a lot of methods for getting data from the event and I have selected my top 9. These I think are the most important or the most relevant the ones that I use the most, so they are get title, get description, get location, get date created, get start time, get end time, get guest list, get email, and get guest status. So let's jump into the code and see an example of each of these. For the sake of time, I've pre-written all of the methods that we just saw on the slide so that this video isn't just me typing the entire time. But first, we're going to need an event. So this is what this first line is. We're going to access calendar app, get the default calendar, get events for day, and we're going to access the events for tomorrow. So as you can see, today is the 27th, and we're going to access the, the events for the 28th. So if we go into our calendar, we can see that there is just one event, and that is why we are getting the first one, but also this is the only one. All right, so then if we look manually, if we go into the user interface and we look at the details for this event, you can see that it's titled Lunch at Basketball. It's going to be tomorrow, Friday, from noon to one. It's at the Palestra. There's gonna be two guests. One is the event organizer, which is my college email address, as you can see here. And then also, this email address has invited David the Weiss 7 at Gmail to this event. All right, so this is the uh, event description. It's called, it's, it's, it's uh, described as the boys are at it again. Come out and play some pickup basketball with us. And I, you can see that I haven't responded yet. I haven't responded yes, no, or maybe. I am still, or the response is still pending. Great. So let's try to get a lot of that information programmatically. So the first one is get title, which is self-explanatory. That's um, lunch and basketball. The next one is get description, also self-explanatory. Get location. Remember, it's the palestra get date created. So this one, actually this data point, we could not get from this event on its own. So we don't know when David the Weiss sent this out. I suppose we could go to our Gmail and, and see when we got an email saying, hey, accept this or decline this invite. But just looking at this card alone will not tell us when the date or when the event was created. All right, the next is get start time. That's again, self-explanatory. It's noon, get end time, one o'clock get guest list, so this is going to return all of the guests here, excluding the organizer, so excluding the person who made the event. If you wanted to include them, you would just have to pass in the parameter right here of true. And let me show you that right in the auto completion. So if I say get guest list, there are two methods. One is get guest list, which returns an array of event guests. But there's also this one right here, get guest list, and you can pass in this optional parameter, uh, which is a Boolean, and it's include owner. So if you say yes, if you say true to that, then it's also going to include the organizer or the owner of the event. Great, so this is only going to return us one, so it's just going to return this email address because I am the only guest, if you will, on this, but if there are multiple, it would return multiple, uh, multiple event guests within that array. So again, let's just pick out one of them and we'll pick out uh, the first one, which is gonna be the only one. And then we'll get email. So we're going to get the email of this guest right here. Again, the only one, the first one. And that is going to be davidweiss7 at gmail.com. The next one is get guest status. So get guest status is basically how have they responded? And since I haven't responded, it's going to say, uh, I believe it's going to say invited. But if I said, Yes, no, maybe it will change to yes, no, or maybe. All right, so if we hit save and we hit run just to see this in action. All right, so it's gonna run, it ran. Let's view the logs. And something was up with the logs, so we need to look at them again. Maybe we need to run it again. All right, we're only getting a couple of the logs. Let's view the logs. Now we only get one. I suppose there's a problem when you have multiple log statements like this, but maybe if we just wait a little bit more. All right, let's check out the logs now. If it doesn't work, all right, there we go, okay. 
Sometimes it does that. The logs, they, they take a while, I suppose. If you if you don't see some of the data and you know you logged it, sometimes you just have to wait a few seconds just for it to refresh or whatever like that. All right, but anyways, let's look at our log data. So again, here's the title, which is exactly what we asked for. Lunch and basketball. Here's the description. Here's the location. Here is the date created. So this was created at 3.55, which was just about um, 15 minutes ago. So that is cool because we don't see that again. We do not see that data in the in this card in this in this invite right here. So that's kind of cool. We don't we wouldn't ordinarily see it, but now we can see it in in programmatically. All right, this is the date start. So this is the start date, which is at noon tomorrow. Yep, and then get or the end date is at one o'clock. Great, and then get the guest list again. This is going to return an array of event guests. Since there's only one because we decided to exclude the owner, that makes sense. Again, there's only one event guest in this array. All right, so here is the get guest email, and that is indeed this email. Lastly, we have invited for get guest status, and that is correct because I was invited, but I haven't responded yet. If I say yes, that I am going, responded yes, great. And then I say, let me just comment this out just so that we don't get that same problem of having to wait for our logs. But if I say save and I say run and I'll say view logs. And we'll wait for it, but it should respond yes. And here it is. So yes. So now we have that I indeed said yes, I responded yes, and that is what it's picking up on. Um, it could be, let me just show you what it could be. It could be, uh, actually we already have it here, but if we said dot, it could be invited, maybe, no, owner, or yes. So these are the five different selections for the guest status enum, and um, so it could be any one of these. All right, guys, I hope you learned something in this video. If you liked it, don't, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.